957, 958. My boy, Shota Imanaga and the Cubs at minus 140. You've got Miles Mikolas and the Cardinals at plus 125. Total of eight with some juice to the under at minus 120. Kenny, we're, we're on the same page here. I added this a little bit after you did. Uh, the thing I like here, this is minus 115 on the run line for Shota, but plus 120 on the double results. So you're getting 35 full cents here on the flip. Uh, so that works for me. I'm taking Cubs double result. I know people don't want to believe in Shota Imanaga. I do. I love this guy. I think he's the clear rookie of the year right now. I think he's outpitched Yamamoto, his countryman. I like Imanaga here. Nicholas is terrible. I actually like the Cubs lineup better than the Cardinals. I know the Cardinals have a couple of you know big names in there, but I actually prefer this Cubs lineup, especially against righties when you can get Talkman in the top of the order against righties. Give me the Cubs double result plus 120. What do you got? Yeah, I agree. I took the Cubs double result. I'm, I've been reading the chat too. Like a lot of people in the chat want to back St. Louis today. I think everyone is just waiting for the for the Schroeder regression. And like, like I, I kind of hear what you're saying, but at the same time, like I'm just not fading the guy until he gives me a reason to fade him. Um, but for me, this is twofold. One, I like Imanaga. I'm still buying the hype in Imanaga, and I think Mikolas absolutely stinks. And yeah. on top of that, this this Cubs this Cubs projected lineup has insane numbers against Mikolas. Hap, Burner. Mm-hmm. Swanson, Jan Gomes all have great numbers against Mikolas. Cubs are swinging a hot bat here. They have their best pitcher on the mound. I'm going to back them against the Cardinals, who have been just the total disappointment this year. So my only concern here, it's it's not as dire as the as the White Sox game, but weather is an issue. It's just not a dicey one. Some scattered score, some scattered storms moving in, not particularly fast moving ones. He's got a graded as orange, so. You know, I, I don't necessarily love that, but gun to my head, it looks like they're probably going to play. I'm back in the better pitcher, and I'm back in the better offense. Cubs, double result. Yeah, I like the Cubs quite a bit here, and I get it. You know, Shota's probably not going to have a .94 ERA for the entire season, right, B-Dub? There's going to be a little bit of regression, I would imagine. But yeah. I think this is a short price. Like, like Shota has been so much better than Miles Mick. Minus 140? This doesn't feel – to me, this is the same sort of uh, difference in starting pitching and certainly in results this year as Corbin Burns flexing. And we're getting a minus 140 here on Imanaga over a horrible righty in Mikolas. Am I missing something here? Yeah, I wouldn't go that far. I th- I think that I think that Imanaga, you make a couple good points. You know, his his ERA is not going to be 0.84 the whole season, but looking at his base winner ERA, and this is component stats. Now these will these will carry over. Uh, I think uh, they will they will go. They're more reliable. They they will correlate to future performance a little bit better. Strikeout percentage, walk percentage, ground ball percentage, and those things are good numbers to use. If it's two nine four, it's really good. Uh, Mikolas is right about league average at four point three three. But comparing the two pitchers, you look at strikeout percentage. Imanaga again in the in the top quartile strikeout percentage twenty seven point seven percent, actually a little bit higher than Corbin. And then Mikolas is in the lower quartile. Uh, at 18.3 percent strikeout percentage raw, and you say sometimes with these with these guys that can't strike out anybody, you say, well, you know, he 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 doesn't allow a lot of hard contact. Well, you can't even really say that about Mikolas. You look at this season, 13.2 hard hits per nine, the 10th percentile. So I I don't think I think that you could at best say Mikolas is a league average pitcher against Imanaga, who I, I would disagree a little bit. Not much, though, that I think that Yamamoto is a little bit better. And, and the numbers say base winner ERA, Yamamoto 288, Imanaga 294. But they're both really, really good. And I, I think that it's dangerous to kind of look at those advanced stats and say, well, this guy's going to regress when the advanced stats are good on him. So anyway, uh, second leg of base winner parlay, it pays uh, plus 127. We're going to go first five Cubs, first five uh, Orioles with two really good pitchers against two really not so good pitchers, Kyle. Um, I remind you guys, we got the base winner wrap coming on, and I don't want to hold the base winner wrap hostage here for a ransom, but hit that like button. That helps us out quite a bit. I, Scott D's out here saying no wrap unless we get 50 likes. That'd be amazing if you pull that off and we just give him the chat power. So hit the like button. That does help us out quite a bit. For purposes of the show, all three of us like the Cubs today. Kenny and I are going to take that double result at nice plus money. I think this is a great price. One of the better price double results we've had this year, in my view, at plus 120. And then we're going to take the Cubs first five as the second leg of the base winner parlay along with the Orioles first five. And that pays plus 127.